Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. We got some breaking news out of Victoria, Australia. I'll give you a quick map here, give you a shot of the nation and continent of Australia. Victoria is down here on the far southeast coast, state of Victoria and Australia where all this has taken place. Specifically, we're going to be looking at events in and around Melbourne, but throughout the entire state of Victoria. Um, Victoria, Australia, citizens must have the jab, that'd be the COVID-19 vaccination, to participate in the vaccinated economy. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, come on, really? I thought this was a bit of hyperbole, somebody trying to get some attention. Well, Not really. Victoria, Australia, Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews has announced the Australian state is headed towards the edict that citizens must have a COVID-19 vaccination in order to participate in the state's economic system. And here is a picture here of uh, Mr. Andrews. And I quote, there's going to be a vaccinated economy and you get to participate that in that if you are vaccinated. We're going to move to a situation where, to protect the health system, we are going to lock out people who are not vaccinated and can be. Now, you just let that sink in for a little bit. Uh, he's serious about it. And here's some more quotes. Uh, from Mr. Daniel Andrews, the Victorian premier, the economy, as best as it can, will operate as close to normal as possible to people who have had two doses. And again, that's Daniel Andrews. Uh, Victoria, the state of Victoria, is also promoting the idea of vaccination passports. And this technology will be utilized via Android and Apple smartphones. So you get the jab, you get you a little QR code, and uh, you can show that you've been appropriately vaccinated, and then you can go about the country, flash them your little smartphone, give them a QR code, and everybody knows you're good to go. Now, the Victorian Chamber, uh, this is a quote here from Victoria Chamber Chief Executive Paul Guerra. The Victorian Chamber raised the concept of vaccination passports months ago. You only need to look overseas to see that they are likely to be an integral part of our opening up. So pay attention to what that's saying. This is coming to other countries soon as far as Mr. Guerra is concerned. He seems to think this is going to be happening overseas from Australia. Uh, Vaccination certificates must be integrated with the QR code check and as a single system to reduce the impost on business and that technology should be rolled out as soon as such a scheme commences. And again, that's Victoria Chamber Chief Executive Paul Guerra. And this is this is not some fringe uh, source. This is abc.net out of Australia. Daniel Andrews, vaccine passport, double vaccinated. And you need both jabs. One ain't going to cut it. Uh, you're going to need both of the mRNA vaccinations in order, in order to participate in the Victoria economic system. I mean, that is that's exactly what they're saying. This is and there's no hiding this. There's no deception here. This is upfront in your face. This is what's going to to go down. And this is from Alert Channel or at Alert Channel on Twitter. Uh, don't take my word for it. I provide the clip here. Go to the website, paulthepoke.com, click on the little play arrow, just like right here, and you're not going to hear it here, but he spends a minute 20 explaining himself, and and that's the thing of it, too. He presents himself as very reasonable. He's looking out for everybody's health and safety. Uh, This is not a big deal. This is just what you need to do if you're going to want to be able to participate in the, in the economy (laughs) in the future. So you want to eat, you want to get gas, you want to pay your bills, Um, you better go get vaccinated. That's what he's saying. Um, you know, and he's nice, articulate, well-spoken, clean cut guy. Doesn't look sinister. And I think that's important to realize that because what's coming is going to be smooth. 
and he's not going to look evil. He's going to be very well liked. He's going to seem very reasonable. And he's not, he, he's going to be deceptive. Uh, this guy's telling you what he's going to do. And I think, I think we need to, this is a real sober situation. We got taken place in one state in Australia. And by the, by the talk of some of it, they seem to think this is going to be spreading. And this is something that's going to be taking place quote overseas as they see it, as they understand it. So I would look forward, you know, in the coming weeks and months that other people are going to roll this kind of idea out with these uh, passports in order to participate in the economy. This also took place. um, Roll back up here real quick. Check it out. ABC.net.australia. Read the article in depth. Again, the, the more you can alert yourself to this, pay attention to this. And this is not being covered here in our Western press. No way. No way. Uh, and it's on Twitter. You know, not very many people have seen it, but it's happening. Uh, this also happened in Melbourne. Australian Jews celebrating Rosh Hashanah in Melbourne, in a Melbourne synagogue, were fined for violating COVID-19 policies. Now, there were approximately 100 worshipers. Uh, They were each fined $5,452 Australian dollars or $4,026 U.S. dollars. And again, this is a quote from Victoria Premier Daniel Andrews. I understand this has been a very difficult year for lots of people that can't go and do things that they want to do. But if we don't follow these rules, then we will all have to wait longer to do the things we want to do. That's why the rules apply to everybody. And again, that's Victoria Premier, Daniel Andrews. And this is from the Times of Israel. Aussie cops surround synagogue on Rosh Hashanah over alleged lockdown breach. We're going to go to this article. Um, Let you take a look at it. This is from the Times of Israel. Uh, group of Orthodox Jews hit with steep penalties after celebrating Jewish New Year in violation of local COVID ordinances and refusing police orders to to leave house of worship. Now, this is very um, sanitary how they handled this, I guess would be the best way to put it. Uh, police on Tuesday issued fines to worshipers at a synagogue in Melbourne where they held Rosh Hashanah services. And of course, this is a violation of pandemic lockdown ordinances. Again, about 100 worshipers gathered inside the synagogue until around 5 a.m. and refused to leave until nightfall. Uh, Police surrounded the synagogue after receiving calls of a suspected mass gathering held in breach of COVID-19 restrictions. And they weren't going to force their way in, but they were going to wait for them to come out and start issuing citations. Um, And again, Melbourne has strict stay-at-home orders in place. Residents barred from holding gatherings or leaving their homes each night during curfew, among other sweeping restrictions. Um, And I've read that quote already. And again, you can go to Twitter. You can show these people coming out of the synagogue and getting fined and, and arrested or having citations. Um. And Jewish leaders have previously condemned lockdown violations. So the Jewish Community Council of Victoria put out a video last week urging local Jews to adhere to coronavirus restrictions and mark their Jewish New Year at home. Well, a hundred of these folks decided, "Uh uh-uh, we're going to go celebrate at the synagogue. And they did. (laughs) They got fined about 4,000 bucks a piece. Uh, I'll go back to the other. Well, before that, we'll go back to Twitter. You can... Check this guy out on Twitter. He's all over Twitter, Mark Andrews. Uh, And again, this is from Alert Channel, at Alert Channel. Australian Premier Dan Andrews plans to lock out unvaccinated citizens. Only vaccinated will be able to participate in the economy in the future. Listen to his own words himself. Don't listen to me. I mean, don't take my word for it. I mean, listen to what these people are saying. Um, and then we'll go to the ABC news and here's a little watch live. Daniel Andrews is providing an update on Victoria's COVID outbreak. So he's, he's speaking live as we, as, as I put this out. Um, and the (laughs) Victorian premier says the state is heading for a vaccine economy. Here's what that might look like. And there's your little QR code on your smartphone. 
have them scan that and it'll tell you you've been vaccinated and you are free to participate in the economy. Now I do like this. Now who knows what the truth, what, what this is, but you kind of feel for some of these people. Now this guy says he's all for it. Uh, owner of Horsham's exchange hotel, Nick Murray, and he supports the idea, but it's like, well, yeah, we think in terms of, uh, uh, where is his quote? Oh yeah. Uh, whilst we certainly don't like the idea of turning anyone away, we need to do whatever it takes to ensure the survival survival of our businesses. If that's allowing vaccinated people to enter our venues, then yes, we fully support that. And they also say that, um, uh, you know, the other businesses are supportive of this, but it's like, what are you going to do? I mean, they're in a tight, they're in a tight spot. Um, and, 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 and that's, that's kind of the crunch of this deal is that your behavior, uh, your ability to conduct business commerce, feed yourself, take care of your family, pay bills for your house, get gas, will be tied to a vaccination. And a lot of you know where this is going. In fact, I've seen many people speculate some other stuff, which we're getting ready to cover here in just a little bit. But, um, you know, private businesses, Qantas, SPC, and Xavier College have made vaccination a requirement to their employees. So it's going all throughout... uh, throughout Australia and again, here are the quotes from Mr. Guerra. And then they've also got something about some Mooney Valley racing club announced strict, no jab entry policy for the Cox plate carnival. Okay. I don't know. It's probably a big deal in Australia. I'm not sure about it. I don't know, but at any rate, that's going on in Australia. Uh, not speculation from some conspiracy wacko real world news. Guaranteed it's not being covered here in the States. We don't have time for that. You know, uh, dear Lord, tell us what Kim is up to and Taylor Swift and I don't know whoever, but I want to take a quick look and we're going to close out with Revelation 13 verses 16 through 18. <clears throat> and he, that's the Antichrist, causes all the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. Now, as I read this, I'll be honest with you. I take this pretty literally. I suspect there will be a mark on people's right hand or on their forehead. And he provides the Antichrist that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one that has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for that number is that of a man. And his number is 666. So, uh, the antichrist is going to require a mark. Uh, and we'll get into that in just a second, but I do, I, I think it's necessary to have this discussion. Um, am I saying Mark Andrews, is he the antichrist? No, he's not. Uh, is the COVID-19 vaccination the mark of the beast? No, it's not. It's not. And I think we need to pay real close attention as to where we are within the context of time and some of the events that precede Revelation 13. So before we get to Revelation 13, one quarter of humanity has not died as noted at the onset of the tribulation in Revelation Six. So currently there are about, what, 8 billion people on the planet. Uh, a quarter of that would be 2 billion people will die in Revelation 6. We've not had an event where 2 billion people have died. We're not there. There's no third Jewish temple currently, so we don't have that even in place. There are no two witnesses bearing witness to humanity about its sinfulness in front of the temple. They're not on the scene. And then in Revelation 9, another third of humanity will perish. And again, that's roughly going to be from that time, you know, from eight down to six, well, a third of a six is another two billion people. You know, so by the end of Revelation 9, half 
of the population of planet Earth will have died. We've, we've seen nothing like that. And I mean, I think that speaks to the scope and the scale of what's getting ready to come to this planet at some point in the future. Um, and the Antichrist has not taken out the two witnesses and assumed power. And, you know, looking at Revelation 13, the seal and trumpet judgments will have been completed. And none of that's happened yet, let alone all the other earthquakes that happen and all the other stuff that's mentioned. I mean, that's just kind of the cliff notes of, of, of the 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 level of death that is going to take place at some point in the future. So I feel pretty confident we're not in the, you know, as of September 2021, we are not in the great seven-year tribulation. We're just not there. In the context of the mark of the beast, it emerges with the total domination and rule of the Antichrist. And this takes place during the last three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation. So, you know, in my estimation, we haven't even started let alone seen 4 billion people die. And the Antichrist assumes power in the last three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation. Um, we're not there. We're just not there. And again, I, I, I speak a lot of scope and scale. Uh, the mark of the beast, the scope and scale of the mark of the beast is the entire planet. And these events that are taking place, uh, it's happening in the Australian state of Victoria. But the reality of this, a current political figure is requiring an action on individuals or, or, or an action of individuals, and that's getting vaccinated. And you need to get vaccinated in order to participate in economic affairs. So the precedent is being set that, hey, this action requires you to participate <clears throat> for your own financial well-being. Now, in this case, it's taking a shot. At some point in the future, some guy's going to demand to be worshipped. Worship me in order to, to participate in the economy. And we're going to go back to Revelation 13, and, and this day's coming. John writes this. John says in Revelation 13, this day is coming. And Jesus told him, so it's, it's legit. You know, Jesus told him this day is coming, <clears throat> and he causes all the small and the great, the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves. Everyone who is alive at this future time will be faced with this decision. And no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark. And so it's going to affect one's ability to engage in commerce. Again, groceries, gas, water, clothes, uh, pay your bills, insurance. You know, and, and we also know at that point, you know, from the outset in Revelation 6, it's going to cost you a day's wage to eat. So I'm sure by the time we get to Revelation 13, food will be more scarce. Um, inflation will be higher. And you can just smell it coming. It's like, you know, I'll protect you, this guy will say. And I'll take care of you. Just take the mark and we'll, we'll give you a little deal here. You won't have to, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cut you a break. Um and get you some food. And and the thing to remember, these verses, you know, if you look at the language, the Greek language of the verses in Revelation 13, <clears throat> it's an appeal to your intellect. And it's not an emotional response that's made because one has a flutter in their stomach. And, and, and have a little thought and compassion for these people going through this. They're probably going to be starving. They're watching their family suffer. And... <clears throat> you don't want to watch that happen of your family and you'll want to take care of them. But you, if you do, it's, it's going to cost you your eternity. So it's not some emotional gut hunch. I mean, you're going to be faced with real crisis, real hardship, real hunger, real suffering. We can't even fathom what that's going to look like here in the West in the United States. We've had it so good. And we need, we need to have a reality check, you know, and those people at that time are going to be, they're going to have to take control and hold some serious mental faculty and focus, pay attention closely, think and discern and have sober purpose. I mean, this, this is a massive decision and it'll be the biggest choice of your life. 
eternal destination is going to ride on this decision. And we know that state in Revelation 14, verses 9 through 11, then another angel, a third one, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest day and night. Those who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. You know, and at the core of that, so you're making a decision. You know, you choose the Antichrist. You're choosing Satan's chosen. And if you choose God, and if you're still around at this point, you're going to have some massive suffering. But here we are now in September of 2021, and we still have a choice. And that choice is the gospel, the good news that is Jesus Christ. And Scripture says he died for our sins. And we're all fallen. We all are sinners. We all screw up. And we all know it. And we all fall short of perfection. And that's the idea, is that a holy God, a just God, <clears throat> demands, um, unfortunately demands consequences for our actions. And there is ultimately a punish, punishment. Now that punishment is death. And, you know, these bodies die, but our soul and our spirit um, you know, when this body perishes, our soul and spirit have a destination. Now, if you believe that Jesus died and paid the penalty for that sin, the fine, if you will, you know, and here in the United States, we pay fines. We get, you pay so many dollars for whatever it is you did wrong. And that's kind of our penal code. Well, God's demands a little more and God demands physical death and separation from him. And he makes that very clear from the outset in Genesis. It's what he told Adam and Eve. Uh, you know, you will surely die if you eat from the tree. And it's just simple obedience, believing in him, trusting in him, and believing that he will take care of that for you. Well, we failed as, as humanity. <clears throat> and that appears to be coming to a head. But the good news is somebody lived a perfect, sinless life and took our place and paid the penalty, shed his sinless blood, and that's the currency God operates on, sinless blood. So if you think about all the sacrificial system, all those animals were sacrificed. They were sinless. They didn't have anything to do with it. But there would be a man who would come along who was better than those sacrifices, and he was perfect. And his sinless blood was shed on behalf of those who accept that payment. And that's Jesus. And I would encourage you to click on the category of the gospel, all kinds of articles. And you can read through every single one of those. If you want that in a book form, click on that. And there's a book that's written about it. And I know some people are saying, well, the gospel doesn't cost anything. Well, that's true. The gospel doesn't cost anything. Uh, but if you want it arranged in a book format, you can click on it, I think for like a buck 99 or two 99. Or if you just want to click on this link right here, you can read it all. It's all there for you. I mean, it's just a matter of how, how you want to access the information. If you want it in a book format, it's like eight, eight bucks for a physical book, one 99 or two 99 for, for an ebook. So, um, but Jesus's offer is free. And he, he, anyone who'll take it, God doesn't desire that anybody perish. Anybody can accept the free gift of salvation. That is Jesus Christ and eternal life with God. Um, there it is. It, it's, it's out there. Take it or leave it. But don't kid yourself. If you, if you don't believe that, if you don't want that, Revelation makes it pretty clear where you're headed. You don't want to be with God. That's fine. He'll listen to you but it doesn't end the way you think it will. Uh, 
but it's, it's one of those things i'll be honest with you i didn't think we would ever see a thing like this where somebody would tie behavior to participation in the economy as a whole i thought that would be something that would be reserved specifically for those last seven years but here we are we're not in those seven years yet and we're seeing hints of it in certain parts of the world already and i think that speaks to where we are um in time in relation to you know this is getting closer and this is a this is a hardcore we are trending hard toward um these things now they could be years away i don't know the answer to that but jesus said in luke 21 verse 28 when you see these things begin to happen look up your redemption draws near so look up you know and to me that is a veiled comment resurrection of the dead and rapture look up that's where he's at meet him in the clouds where the bride of christ is the is the is the church so at any rate um, please share with this, share this stuff with others. Um, pretty sobering thing to see this morning. And, um, again, I don't know where we are, but it would appear we're getting a little bit closer. And I think this is something that gives you pause for thought and we should pay attention to it and have some real thought about it. So appreciate y'all taking the time. Wish y'all the best. Stay tuned. Looks like we're going to have plenty of things happening. Uh, News will probably just make you shake your head at some point. Talk to you later. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.